So during the pandemic, probably one of the biggest things and issues for us was product development. Holy cow, things were like at a standstill. And so with that, we had a cleanser that went out of stock. So we're like really excited to get this going. We were out of stock for so long. And, and we kept then... giving previews like, oh my God, guys, we can't wait to make this announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm both still stock shit. That only works for so long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guys, yeah. we're so excited. Guys, we're so excited. <laughs> it was so I'm bad. Just waiting for the ship. <laughs> when would the ship dog? This is Startup to Storefront, the podcast where we inspire entrepreneurship through truth. Returning to the show today are Victoria Fu and Gloria Liu, co-founders of Chemist Confessions and authors of the new book, Skincare Decoded, Practical Guide to Beautiful Skin. When we last spoke with Victoria and Gloria, they were busy running an online skincare platform and developing new skincare products. Somehow in the middle of all that, they managed to squeeze in writing a book as well. And if you ask them, they initially thought it wouldn't be much more than repackaging everything they'd already written on their blog. They couldn't have been more wrong. But that same effort and care they've put into their blog went into their book, and as a result, sales are spiking. So listen in as we cover everything from having to navigate the launch of the book on their own, why Gloria's excitement about finding her book at her local bookstore was not shared by the cashier, and what humans have in common with guinea pigs when it comes to skincare. Now, back to the episode. Welcome to the podcast. We're back with Chemist Confessions. Hey. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks Welcome for back. Us. New space. We all survived you, COVID you? together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it feels really good to see humans and yeah. give hugs. Oh, that was really <laughs> awkward. I was like, uh, is this how it used to work? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. So what have you guys been up to? What Nothing. have you guys been working on? <laughs> we have this beautiful oh, no. book on the table. <laughs> yes. It's just a book there. <laughs> yeah, just a book. So the book is our COVID baby. It came out end of March. Yeah. The editor gave us six months to write it. It took us a whole year. So. Okay. What made you guys decide to write a book? Oh, so yeah, we did not decide to write a book. And the publisher approached us. They emailed us and we thought it was like a spam email because... Okay. Yeah. Do it you was just want so a book? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> we like really did not believe that this was a Someone, legitimate email. Victoria's Secret Models wants to meet you. It's like kind of that kind yeah. of email. It's like, I yeah. get those emails every day. You guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we decided we responded. Um, we met them, Roland and Owen, and we thought it actually would be a great partnership because they do a lot of wonderful like visual books. Mm. So they do recipe books, they do movie, like movie spreads. And so we're like, oh, that's perfect because skincare can get really dense and boring, skincare science. So we were like, we would need help to like spruce it up, have some fun diagrams, things like that. And lo and behold, that, that happened before pandemic and it was only supposed to be a six month project. Yeah. And uh, then it doubled the time. I remember because the manuscript was due like Memorial Day, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like May. And then we started writing in like end of February, right around the time the pandemic hit. And we're like, this is not going to be done in May. <laughs> just, no. Yeah, yeah. Did they give you any like coaching or any resources in terms of visuals or... No. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting a no. Maybe even a ghostwriter. So so when we met with them, um, part of the thing that we stressed on was we have a company. So and we've never written a book before. Don't even think of ourselves very highly as writers. So we need a lot of help, a lot of handholding. We don't we know nothing about laying books out, like having any sort of design background. And they really they reassured us that they had the team for it. And they told us that for writing, they can even help us fill in the blanks. But then it just turned out that with something so specific, like skincare science, it's just so hard for other people to really fill in. Right. So we wound up doing a lot, hand, very hands-on. <laughs> Joke's on us. Yeah. <laughs> that we still, a lot of it was us and figuring out structure. Mm -hmm. So... It's broken up into three parts. I think the hardest thing was when we did the Instagram was skincare science is like really dense. No one gets any professional training on it. So how can we get a beginner to 
like where would be their starting point to like start learning and that's why we're like okay the book has to be that because in Instagram you're just it's instant right you're just swiping and it's like you've only got 30 seconds to make an impression have them take away one singular thing but then with the book oh my god I don't know how many times we redesigned it Oh, well, you have to really think their design team because yeah. we start out writing just like a doc, right? Like all the manuscript and then they place it into little yeah. trunks and whatnot. And then for us, when we saw it, we we're like, oh my God, this doesn't make sense. So I felt really bad for a designer too because we kept moving things around on her and then they were so patient with us. I think we had, or maybe not because we had three different designers at one point. <laughs> and, uh, and they were so patient working with us and like changing the layout like four different times just to make sure it makes sense. Yeah. And were they trying to release it or time the launch with like a certain event? Because that's always the hard part, right? When it comes to publishing is you have to release the book typically on the heels of like, I mean, I don't really know the beauty market, but when... That's a great question. They, so originally you, the idea you. was... Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's funny because... I love people say great questions. I'm like, what about the previous questions? Those were... <laughs> those, those were me. <laughs> those yeah. were all... You so this one really this one, hits home. This, this, this one. This one we like. Way, way to go. Now, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the goal was it would come out during Christmas. And okay. And they realized... That makes sense. That no one gives a skin care book during Christmas because that's a little it's awkward. It's insulting. A little I know bit. I only see you once a year, but you could do better. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you, you need help. Like you need help. <laughs> I would have thought maybe uh, like summer, like because, so to me, again, I know nothing about this, but in terms of skincare, at least the way I think about skincare is like sunscreen. Yeah. yeah. That seems yeah. to be like the most yeah. approachable door. Or like back for to school. Me. Right. Yeah. I was thinking you show more of your skin during summer. No, so you would want... Sure. Oh, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Diego's like, whoa. <laughs> Crazy. So the Christmas deadline was it. Okay. That was kind of... Well, Laura had mentioned the Memorial Day. Um, that was to we make were, the Christmas timeline. Yeah, to make the Christmas timeline. Wow. That's... that's was it five months? or six month lead time? You need to test print and then um, catch any bugs. Um, and then it needs to circulate within their marketing because they need to promote to different vendors and stuff. Right. And then you need actual production. and needs to come out in October to kind of make the Christmas promotion timeline. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We missed that by a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to say so like at what point did you realize you were just going to blow past that deadline and what was the discussion like with your publisher i think when we were nearing memorial day weekend yeah and then we we're still <laughs> editing the moisturizer <laughs> we're still chapter, which is chapter four by the way chapter <laughs> four it was pretty early so okay. we had our editor was like kind of her personality was very much like a cheerleader so she definitely was one that's like, we got this. It's going to be fine. And then by May, we're like, it's not going to be fine. <laughs> in terms of like, how are these deals structured? Do they pay you in advance for this? Or is it something like you get a percentage of sales? We get a peanut for every book that's sold. <laughs> you get like a penny? Like a couple? Of... Yeah, we get a royalty with every okay. copy sold. Okay. And then during the time of writing, um, there is like a writer's stipend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So two groups of people. I figured one group would be like so ecstatic that, that someone reached out to them to write a book. We were. We you guys really were like, were. never no. again. Because, well, it felt right because we did so much writing for Instagram right. and the blog. And like Victoria said, there's no structure, very no. whimsical with what subject we write about. So we felt like putting this book together is good for our followers. And it's also good for us to kind of organize everything and like not get lost in the chaos of everyday life or just running the company. But um, when we started writing, in the beginning, we really thought like we've written so much. It's going to be about pulling what we've just already like written dump. and yeah. reorganize. Yeah. Right. Well, we rewrote everything. Yeah. Like, nothing in there is a copy and paste from anything we've written before. So what, what led you to that? Like, I, I would have thought the exact same thing. You know, you've already done what I would consider the body of the research needed for a book like this. But were you discovering new things in the process that you, made you rethink what you had already published? I mean, for me, Victoria, I can speak our, our mental dream, but for me, it's discovering that in 2017, I was a terrible writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me, it was the organization of it yeah. was the discovery. You know, like finally putting everything together and thinking about like who... We always Who laugh. Who is she? Who is the person this? reading the book, right? And, you know, 
is the person going to sit there and read from page one to the end? Or are they looking for like specific help at that specific time in their routine? So how do you cater to both? And gotcha. that's where I think a lot of the pain mm -hmm. and the struggles were. But the way it turned out, like I, don't, I think we couldn't be happier because... Right. From what we know, it's like there are people that are definitely looking for specific topics, but most who like really are just like trying to figure out skincare, they actually do sit there and read from page one to the end, which is shocking to me. I but. would never have predicted that because like yeah. it's not yeah. a novel. It's no. not like a, it's not something that you need to follow linearly. Yeah. I would think like, okay, I have this problem. Let me let me jump ahead to this chapter and then maybe on like if I am curious or whatever, I go back to like chapter four yeah. or, or seven and you bounce around. But like, how did you find out that people are actually like reading these things cover to cover so one of my favorite our favorite feedbacks about the book is someone reached out to us and told us that she's been following our instagram for a long time and she's like oh to be honest i don't really understand a lot of your posts and she's absolutely right because our instagram community draws a lot of experts and people who are a lot more advanced in skincare science mm -hmm. and they ask such deep questions that we respond to it in our content so we use a lot of terminology that maybe most people don't understand so for her she said I was really worried that the book would be really hard for me to understand too, but it was so easy to just follow through the journey. I read the whole thing in like in one go. Yeah. So And it was easier now for her to like read our posts and understand like where we're coming from. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like in a very backwards way, the super educated posts came first and then the right. explanatory post or explanatory like book adopters. came second. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think the other challenge for us is we don't have any specific product examples in there yeah. and not being able to provide those examples. We're like, okay, is that helpful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make them a little bit removed from actual application? But we just couldn't handle the red tape that comes with dealing with brands. So we were like, all right, as long as we give them the fundamental like concepts, you know, and stick to what we know, which is ingredients, mm -hmm. they actually have a starting point. And then now we have like follow-ups with like product guidelines like that go along with the book. So have you seen it help the business in a significant way? Yeah. Yeah, actually yeah. we um we definitely it's been a slow trickle cuz we were so busy around the time the book came out. Um came out end of March and to be honest, we didn't do all that much for the book launch. We kind of... Um, we didn't even have a launch party. Did they help you? Did they help you, like, uh, set up events or get you guys some interviews? Uh, so... Uh, the... no, not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another great question. <laughs> if you do say Our so silence yourself. Our speaks volumes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next? Next question. Yeah. <laughs> We're here, aren't we? <laughs> That's yeah, how it yeah. goes. Did you guys think about bringing on, like, is there, like, a, a celebrity or someone who's Instagram famous or something that's like very cognizant or yeah. like does this and then they could become like a launch partner well not so much launch partner but we definitely reached out to some of our instagram mm -hmm. friends big influencers and honestly the community was really kind i didn't think that they would be so open but they did and i mean it was warmly received and i think that's where a lot of it came from Honestly, I'm really happy with how everything turned out, yeah. despite COVID and all of the hiccups. Yeah. Sure. Where do you guys sell the book? Everywhere? Amazon? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazon, Target, Target, Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. Yeah. It's really funny because one of the weirdest moments I have after the book launch was I was walking around just downtown Pasadena where I live now and we went past this bookstore it's not a chain it's just like a local store and went in and that was like kind of as a joke I'm like oh I wonder if I can find our book there and I totally found it on the shelves and it's like really it's a weird moment to see your name and your yeah. book on a bookshelf and I yeah. totally rearranged it and put it up top <laughs> I was just about to ask that <laughs> that's awesome featured a little bit more prominently yeah. all yeah. the s's were on the bottom row I was like well why don't we you could have put up a chair, grabbed a Sharpie, started doing signings. <laughs> yes. You could have made it an event. Yeah. I it was really funny, though, because I went up to the, they have a help desk. I was like, so, uh, do you guys do events? I have a book out right now. And they're like, I don't know, reach out to this person. I'm so unimpressed that an wow. author is in the store. They're like, whatever, dude, figure it out yourself. You're the fifth one today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone has a book. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did, I think there was a moment where it did sort of feel like a fraud because 
when you publish a book, you actually have to register with the Library of Congress. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that moment, mm -hmm. I was like, wait a second, I don't think I'm fit for this. Yes. <laughs> you get like a number, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what Eric told us about. But is that the kind of thing where it's like, I mean, it sounds so official, the Library of yeah, Congress. Yeah, exactly. Is it, is it a trivial thing to it register? Is a okay. Thing. Like, what do you mean? Like the process. The, to no one's actually, vetting you. No one's vetting you. Yeah. Like, oh no. I mean, yeah. no one's vetting us. Yeah. Like you, you don't have like a Senate Judiciary Committee <laughs> no, meeting to no. verify that everything in this book. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. But who knows? I mean, the publisher that that's on there, and so a lot of that is taken up with them. Any follow up from the book? So it, the way I look at it is like this is some sort of medium, right? We have like mm -hmm. print media. Mm -hmm. I actually like it. I looked at one of the pages and it was like, so I'm a big fan of debunking and you guys oh, yeah. have that, right? Yeah. So it's like you give information and then on the last quarter sleeve, there's like a myths debunked, mm -hmm. which is what helps me a tremendous amount. But have you guys thought about making video or like making these things like NFTs on the extreme? <laughs> <laughs> but like making them like, I don't, I hate to say you reading this on camera. Cause in some way each, each chapter yes. yeah. could be a video. Yes. Yeah. We are driving a lot of our content strategy around what we've written in the book, especially given such great reception. We realized that this is definitely the style that will help us reach a broader audience. Mm -hmm. So there are definitely plans. In fact, we have a launch party in early June, and Victoria has been promoting it. Like, Gloria's going to do a reading in the voice of Morgan Freeman. So that's the starting point. You want to give us a little? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Do your best you Morgan, do Morgan Freeman impersonation. <laughs> Make sure that microphone's really close yeah. to you when you do I it. I don't have enough champagne in me. Maybe by the end of the episode, I'll have a Morgan Freeman. That would be incredible. <laughs> I love a good book with photos, and it's actually really helpful. I would think that for most people, like myself, this is really helpful to really break down some yeah. of the more complicated topics. Like you, I just saw a page with the T zone on yeah. your forehead and the U zone. And yeah. It's like it's interesting. I never thought of my face having two different zones. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just my face. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That yeah. is your face. Like it's, like, <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. I'm also a very visual learner, so yeah. everything in here is like super geared towards that, as you would expect, but it's super helpful. I mean, it's always the core of what we wanted is just like being able to just bridge that gaps, mm -hmm. you know, and make honestly just science more approachable, you know, yeah. and I think visuals is the thing that just really lacks, especially in kind of like the debunking, like mm -hmm. circles. So I'm glad you feel it that way. It says shopping red flag. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading Can the, you, the uh, retinol packaging matters section. So what is the red flag as it relates to shopping? It depends on what category you're shopping in. Yeah. Um, so we have in the book towards the very end, we have a chapter on some practical guides. Like Victoria mentioned, we don't have specific product references. So instead we gave some general guidelines depending on which channel you're shopping in. So say if you're going to say on Amazon, you can buy anything on Amazon and that's actually really scary. So you can buy chemical peels on Amazon. We kind of gave a percentage where um, I'd say 30% glycolic you can probably use at home. It's reasonably safe. But on Amazon, you can find things up to 70% glycolic acid. And that's just no, don't do it. <laughs> and the regulation on Amazon isn't great. So sometimes you'll find products that just don't really follow proper guidelines for mm -hmm. even proper manufacturing. So that, those are all red flags of like, hey, maybe this brand doesn't quite know what it's doing. And that's not a great sign. Yeah. yeah. One of the classic examples we give is sometimes you'll find products and on their ingredient list, they'll write vitamin C. But that's not an the actual proper ingredient, name. ingredient labeling. Yeah. So what is the proper... It depends on the molecule, so it's ascorbyl is something. It's either ascorbic acid, magnesium, ascorbyl phosphate, so on and so forth. That's the actual ingredient name. Have you found the pendulum swinging, like, since you first started the company, where oh, people yeah. are like, like, at least for me, we had someone on the podcast who, uh, they're developing a sunscreen, and really, it's just mineral sunscreen. And I was excited, but her whole challenge is she has to get people to understand that there's a difference between mineral sunscreen and oh, wow. what yeah. everyone else puts on Definitely comes a, in the grocery come store, mm -hmm. right? And then the other issues like SPF and that whole basically marketing scheme, I guess, yeah. is the way, best way of putting it. Mm -hmm. And so it's the problem with the podcast is like we talk to people like you guys. And so in my head, it's always like I have this feeling of like, oh, the whole market's getting educated. But do you guys see that in real time? Like obviously you guys are the feedback loop in some way. Yeah, no, I think... I mean, since we started to now, like, 
some of the changes in the industry, I don't like to credit us. <laughs> <laughs> For example, percentages of actives are just like required. Like, you know, you'll see that now they'll use that in the labeling and marketing, which we think is great. That means like things are now more ingredient centric, right? But now we have an issue of people diluting what that percentage might mean or like getting too crazy with the percentages because now people realize like, oh, I need to make sure I actually have enough of this. So I need to go overboard on percentages. So, you know, like, but seeing that we understand that, hey, the consumer is starting to become more and more aware. They're starting to realize like, hey, there are th ways I can look for a better insurance policy that this skincare will work for me. So it's things like that where we're like, it's honestly great to see, but I think that makes it harder for someone who doesn't know anything about skincare to try to step into it, dip their toes in, you know, because now it's like changed so much. So, yeah. In the example you gave, we definitely see that. Like nowadays, I assume if you're not a complete skincare newbie, most people you meet will know the difference between mineral and chemicals on screen. Yeah. Like that's something that's much more commonplace now. Yeah. And the other thing is that the industry realizes that labels are very important. So now you hear things like clean beauty, yeah. you hear reef safe, you hear like there's all these stickers now mm -hmm. that follow every product. You know, the idea is, oh, I make it easier for the consumer to be like, I've ticked off all my boxes, but then it kind of dilutes certain like values and like the way things are formulated. It can like kind of skew that that judgment so it's good and bad i don't know how how else to say it yeah yeah it's hard yeah. but from a business perspective you guys are also selling a product which yeah. is helpful yeah. and then price point is a big thing right so you guys uh, you treat you try to keep it approachable your price points yeah most of our products are around um it's everything's under 42 dollars right okay. now and we're gonna keep it around that neighborhood it's a challenge keeping formula costs low yeah because we use so much active ingredients, but just like our book, the idea is like high-end products that use clinical levels of active ingredients uh, should be approachable for most people. I think the goal is just to keep that mission. So for example, we had our cleanser. So during the pandemic, probably one of the biggest things and issues for us was Prog development. Holy cow, things were like at a standstill. I don't know if you guys had anything sea shipped from a different country, but that was. The supply chain was destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Awful. It yeah. still is backed up in it's many really sectors. Bad. I don't yeah. know for you guys it is. if you're. It's very okay. For candles, it is. We learned that. Candles? That. Candles. Yeah. Yeah, candles? Yeah, so like the glass cases that the candles come in. No way. Apparently, like one ship in particular. One, one ship with sunk. All of the <gasps> candle products coming from Asia to the US. No. Yeah. So it's all so under everyone. water. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, so every single candle man manufacturer is just on hold. Oh yeah. my oh. god. When we had our products get in, and as you guys will know, everything stuck at the harbor yeah. for forever. And right. we couldn't get products. I'm like, right. at least the ship is still floating. That's all we are asking yeah. for. This is fine. <laughs> yeah. And so with that, we had a cleanser that went out of stock. And then we were trying to basically do a next gen of the cleanser where we wanted to offer more bang for your buck and so it'd be 100 ml uh, the original was 100 ml right and then we and went then to 150. 150 ml but the price point would be the same so we're like really excited to get this going we have her out of stock for so long and, and we kept then... giving previews like oh my god guys we can't wait to make this announcement <laughs> <laughs> Both still suck. That only works for so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, we're so excited. <laughs> Guys, we're so excited. It was so and bad. just waiting for the ship. <laughs> when would the ship dock? So I think it was just <laughs> insane. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever consider going to the actual dock and just with a pair of binoculars? Oh, we, we joke about this all the time. <laughs> that we would rent a raft yeah. and we'll like just throw toss the it, boxes toss it down. overboard, just one. We will take it. It's a great way to be mistaken for Somali pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Get me my cleanser. <laughs> yep, pandemic stories. It's what happened. We waited, that's it. Nothing yeah, I mean, yeah. but I mean, it was good. Like when we were able to offer like that bigger volume, I think like a cleanser is actually, I would say probably one of the more difficult things to make a profit on mm. because of weight. Yes. Strictly because of weight and price point. So with that, like- It's everyone's like entry level. 
it, exactly. It's, it's the thing that hooks you to the brand. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to do it, but definitely is like, yeah. <laughs> Business wise, <laughs> this as well. is like turkeys during Thanksgiving. Do you know turkeys are the cheapest throughout the year during Thanksgiving? Even though they should be the highest price because they have the highest demand. They're the is cheapest that because. Of the because no, no, no. They're the cheapest because every grocery store knows you're going to buy a turkey. Also, it's competition. And so they want to hook you with a cheap turkey because so they know you're going to buy everything buy other things. Yeah, that this is the cleanser. Sense. That's the cleanser like the, the Costco turkey. chicken, rotisserie chicken. Five, bo- five dollars for a whole chicken. Yeah, yeah. I they, do the, love the Costco's rotisserie the, uh, CEO. Is it good? It's, it's delicious. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the CEO says there are two things in the store that he cannot ever foresee the price mm-hmm. changing. It's hot the dog. chicken and the hot dog. The one fifty. Because hot it will dog. get you in the door. And then you're gonna never buy had either one of these. Things. Oh my god! The hot dog is a dollar fifty, <laughs> and at first you're thinking, "What am I really getting for a dollar fifty hot really dog?" Good. But it's actually really it's it's, it's one of my normal hot dogs. It's, oh my god! This, the this hot dog. <laughs> I sound so out of touch. I, I, I haven't been to New York in a while, or got an LA street 50. dog in a while. But I think that's on the cheaper side. I would imagine paying like three four bucks, bucks three well, or four yeah. bucks for a hot dog, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Or like a street dog, but like this is like really not to push Costco too hard. And I'm obviously a big fan of Costco, but <laughs> who isn't? Yeah, <laughs> gold star right. member. It's a good Conrad. one. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really good. No kidding. Hang on, hang on. If you're not subscribed. Can you go ahead and do that right now before we get on with the video? Helps us out tremendously. That's all we ask. And we're back. Anything change in your guys' lives personally during the pandemic? I got a dog. Okay. <laughs> I adopted a dog. She's a Australian cattle dog, the blue healer. Gloria. Gloria. I moved to LA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time coming because the company, the company moved during the pandemic. Best news ever. Yeah. <laughs> we are officially based out of Pasadena, and yeah. I okay. finally made it out here. It was nice. really hard because I was really waiting for my fiance to be able to swing a transition. Yeah. So for a while, I was like flying from Cali to East Coast, back to Taiwan, back to East Coast. It was a lot. <laughs> What was it like finding the real estate in Pasadena? Did you guys have an, a trouble finding like no, commercial I space? No, I think a lot of people were moving out because we're just yeah. moving into town. So like finding a rental at the time wasn't too hard. We don't know the area very well. Yeah. So we've definitely seen a couple of like, <laughs> a couple of places where it looks really nice in the picture. And when you drive up to it, you're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those like photographers wood, are. You should worst. pay them a lot. They of do money. their job well. <laughs> three wood yeah. planks and toilet in the corner. You, you throw a wide angle lens into yeah. a small yep. room and it looks massive. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Where in Pasadena are you? Uh, really close to Caltech. Okay. Yeah. Right on. One of the things I, I wanted to bring up from your book, I was I wanted to do like a pop quiz and see how well oh, you no. actually know your book. <laughs> oh no. Oh. So oh, how well do you know your book? Oh yeah. no, we filed that away. <laughs> All right. Page forty two. So, so so on page one forty <laughs> Diego's gonna verify that this is accurate. What do humans and guinea pigs have in common? Vitamin C. Vitamin C. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, do you guys want to explain that for, for everyone like yeah. a little oh, bit more depth? Right. So yeah. a lot of mammals can produce their own vitamin C. Humans and guinea pigs are two exceptions. So that's why vitamin C is a essential nutrient for both humans and guinea pigs. Yes. Why so guinea pigs? Like what about them the man is yeah, required? <laughs> yeah, like F humans and F guinea pigs. Y'all yeah. gotta eat vitamin C. Right. Y'all gotta eat your oranges. <laughs> yeah, that's so fascinating. Yeah. I would have never guessed that. There's vitamin C again. How much do you guys sell your book for? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. I know this might be like premature. Any plans to release a soft cover? version oh like, no idea are soft like because i know I that that's always it. like you know you, you like you have the hardcover editions but then yeah you, i doubt it we do have an ebook but um, there's a kindle edition yeah. yeah okay how have you guys been seeing the ebook versus hardcover how have those been selling ver- when compared to each other like what's doing better so i think the hard copy is still doing better yeah because there's so many graphics, there's a challenge with ebook buying it. Sure. So it doesn't have all the capabilities uh, of an ebook. Like you can't, it's hard to change the font. Um, the translation function doesn't work. It's actually really hard to translate skincare terms. Yes. <laughs> like through languages, what we're learning is like, it's very, or I guess relations like very foreign. So there is no translation available for the ebook version, but 
A lot of our, you know, followers, they're international. So having the ebook is really nice for them since the hardcover is only sold in the States. Is that because other languages just, they don't have the terms or it's too scientific to, I don't even know what like the process would be. We should use Chinese as an example. <laughs> yeah, I think they do have all the terms, but it just doesn't link up very well. And we try to be funny in the book, and jokes are really hard to translate to other languages. <laughs> yes. I only speak one language, but I understand that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I speak Chinese fluently, so even if you were to tell me to translate one of the passages with a joke into Chinese, I, I wouldn't know how to do it. I did say, I did write, in our contract, I did mention that if there were to be a Chinese version, then I will have to review it. Like, if it's too cringy, I'm going to... You've got to add in all your jokes else. again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. But th it is currently being translated to German, as far as we know. So I think one of the chapters, Cleansers, I was struggling so hard trying to think of, like, an analogy of, like, what <laughs> this cleanser was. I have actually never gotten to talk to Gloria about this, but... Basically, um, the analogy was that the cleanser is like your Scotty Pippin in that doesn't get all the fame, but is so crucial to your routine. And I think about this wow. a lot because I didn't Are you know. an avid basketball fan? Well, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like, I'm like religious, but I mean, yeah, I grew up in that era. Like I do appreciate basketball. I watch, sure. I really hate where the Rockets are right now. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> not, not a good I spot. have to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like it's it's moments like that where I'm like, how does this get translated? But I don't know how else to like make that connection, you know, and try to like just help like bridge the gap. A uh, quick aside on Victoria sport watching. She's from Houston. So <laughs> recently, Houston sport is just Ooh. Yeah. I just like see them and say, oh, the shop firmly closed this page. Yeah. Yeah, let's not talk to Victoria about this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and then Ooh, the Astros. Astros. Yeah. Ooh, let's close it. Like, mm. Everyone knows about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's been a dark time recently. Also, seeing all of the Rockets players right now in the playoffs, like or the ex Rockets Rocket players and where they are right now, even Daryl Morey, like it's it's insane. They're rebuilding. It very They're just rebuilding. They're starting yeah. over. Yes. Starting from scratch. Every franchise yes. goes through it at least once. Creating a decade. cap space. <laughs> yeah. So the cleansers of Scottie Pippen. Is there a Michael Jordan? Is that the moisturizer? Okay. We don't want to sign a Michael Jordan, but I just, I think that we always talk about how underrated it is. And no one realizes that just by cleaning your face daily, one time a day, it's really helpful for your like overall like skin health. I used to know a girl that removed her eyeliner once a month. Like she'll just patch it up and just keep going. She never Oh my walked. God. So we used yeah. to have a house in the Hollywood <laughs> Hills. disgusting. I know. And we would Airbnb it. Mm -hmm. And we had like white sheets. Mm -hmm. And I would realize like people would come to LA for the weekend and they would, yeah. they would rent out our house. And every time there was so much makeup on, on like the, the pillow. Oh yeah, just the whole face on the sheet. On your sheet. And I'm like, what? Yeah. It's so gross. And then I was reading like this is a common Airbnb issue actually. Mm -hmm. And so some Airbnbs, oh. what they'll do is they'll... They still use white sheets because they can bleach them, but they would leave makeup uh, remover, the remover palettes. in the bathroom. Hey. Do you guys have any remover wipes? No. We, no, we don't. In but development? Any plans? When we develop the cleanser, one of the tasks we did is we want to make sure that it can be a one and done. Um, double cleansing is kind of a big topic in, in skincare. We want to make sure that it's gentle, but enough that you can remove daily makeup. Maybe not so much like full on clubbing makeup, but on your day to day during grime should be. Oh, in our own podcast, the last time we did an episode, we were like, well, that's the first thing we're going to do. We want to go globing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be surrounded by hundreds of sweaty oh. people. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Are you guys introducing any new products? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we, so we're Sounds like you're introducing hard. some new products. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are. There's been one specific product that we've been working on for probably going on two, two years, years now. Yeah. So we're going to be putting it through a clinical test so that we can actually get some nice results to share. It's going to be a retinol face and eye product. It was really hard to stabilize what we want to stabilize. And then we put it through a, a safety test with a derm to make sure that it's safe around the eye area. We did all of that. We want to refine the texture. And then you, we don't want to release it during summer. So it was like ready to go right around summertime. What is a retinol? Just to, yeah, like, if you were to gonna... make it... 
Michael like, Jordan. It's uh, not the Scottie Pippen. It's the Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's the Michael Jordan, yeah. Aggressive but effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we should preface that retinol is... It's a vitamin A derivative. Basically, it's tried and true to help fight pigmentation and wrinkles. Its cousin, tretinoin, is actually prescription-based, and retinol is the one that you can actually use within skincare that's like not OTC but has really great benefits. And so we wanted to create a face and eye because eye creams are kind of a pain point for us because if you think about the jar, it's like 0.5 ounces. It's small, right? It's yeah. It's like a little lip lip balm thing. Exactly. And okay. then it's charged at more than the actual anti-aging cream. So you can find ones of upwards to $150 for half the amount of like an anti-aging cream. And the issues with eye cream, well, in general, eye creams are very difficult because there's a lot of factors involved with eye bags, dark circles, and the crow's feet. And so because of that, the results of an eye cream aren't great. The price point isn't great, and you only get a very little amount. So what we wanted to do was create a product that could be for both face and eye and just utilize, because ultimately the ingredients that you're using for eye can also work for face, right. and that was the goal. And I guess we're, really, we're announcing it on this podcast, but the product is going to be called Double Play. Okay, yeah. and when's it going to oh, come out? Nice. Yeah. Wrinkles out, dark circles out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really lame. Is there a jingle that you'd like to share with us? There isn't a jingle yet. <laughs> Double yeah. play. Yeah, so baseball. We're, it's okay. going to come out in September. You're going to need a baseball metaphor then, because you don't want to use the Michael Jordan baseball metaphor. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no. Because we don't want M- yeah. baseball MJ. Right. <laughs> this is the Tim Tebow of baseball. <laughs> also not good. He can do anything. So anyways, that's, that's so, yeah, actually one of our play. launches. It's a double play coming out. Yeah. How much are you selling it for? Great question. We haven't talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be around yeah. the $50 mark. Okay. Yeah. Oh. This one is a... Very yeah. approachable. This plays into a question that is right there on the back of your book. Is a $600 <laughs> product better than a $50 one? And I would say Most the answer. Most likely not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We use the cutoff. Like, if you can buy a PlayStation, then it's probably not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> but also, with the PlayStation money, you can get Botox. Is Botox good for you? Yeah, do you is recommend it Botox? It can be helpful. And, like, you know what's interesting? They're starting to do microdose Botox and Ooh. see long term how does that affect actual aging. So, I mean, I think there's, it's helpful. Because I think, I mean, at least in my mindset, and I'm sure a lot of other people, the image that comes to mind immediately when you say Botox is the plastic face, no emotion, mm, just right. like no. completely solidified over. And I, I would imagine it's come a long way since then. It's definitely, and definitely comes with the right provider. I personally never had injections and, and Botox, but I've seen there are certain doctors that just have an eye for how to do it right both fillers and Botox uh, to take away wrinkles in a very subtle way so you still look like you and you're aging gracefully mm-hmm. so you don't get the, I hate to say it, I just watched a friend's reunion, the Ross look. Oh, <laughs> like, oh no. Wait, what's no. the Ross look? Have you seen, oh, I, David I thought he was. I thought he uh, looked pretty good for compared to films? Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry uh, did not look good. Yeah. <laughs> I, although I heard he had emergency dental surgery like right beforehand. So that's kind of why he was, he, he looked like he had a stroke. I feel like I live under a rock. Like, of course, you know, they're all in their 50s or like getting, are they close to their 60s? But I feel like, of course, you know they're going to look aged, but at the same time, it's like a series that you grow up watching and maybe you rewatch. So for them in your head, they're always in their early 30s. And to see that, I'm like, oh, it's been 20 years. Yeah. So, I will yeah. say, I had dinner next to Courtney Cox. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? And she looked amazing. Great. Yeah, she, she, she looks, she looks she great. She looks so yeah. good. Yeah. The women have definitely aged a lot better than the men from oh, that show. Mm-hmm. That's a general statement. I think women tend to care. I mean, I think it it goes both ways. They tend to women plus me. (laughs) (laughs) See, I have a whole routine because of you guys now. I got a cleanser. (laughs) I got the the vitamin E that you. Oh, nice! uh, One of you recommended. (laughs) Our work here is done. Um, (laughs) I use you can fly away now. I use sunscreen all the time. (laughs) I do my vitamin E and sunscreen, and I make like a little thing, and then I put it on my face every morning. 
And then wow, when I play tennis, I got really mineral really sunscreen. Oh, that that's I awesome. Very good, very good. See? You're getting great feedback right now. It's the best thing about the podcast is like I just trust the professionals. <laughs> so at least you've that's the goal. inspired me. Oh, good. In some we way, try. Which is good. <laughs> With alcohol in hand. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get this from my sister. I know she'd be a big fan of it. She'd totally read it. The feedback we've gotten is like pretty cool. There's people that tell us like, you know, we're taking esthetician. I'm in esthetician school and I really need this book. And I'm like, really? That's great. Yeah. That's what we need. And that's a yeah. goal is for like anyone to take something away from it. Even professionals, maybe. Yeah. We want it to be a good reference point for everyone. So. Yeah. Victoria was not kidding when we said we almost killed each other. Because there are days, it depends on the chapter. I think for her, it was moisturizers. I wrote the first pass of moisturizers and she was just like, but who cares and who is it for? And I was like, all right, okay, you rearrange it. And for me, it was sunscreen because yeah. sunscreen is scientifically very dense and we took it extra, extra seriously because, you know, like with skin cancer, everything's not a subject we take lightly, yet we want it to be fun, you know? So it was just really dry. We're trying to spruce it up and then it's like, but, but is this enough? Yeah, I think when I was writing that chapter, Gloria, I think the commentary was always like, it's very dense. I'll look at it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It yeah. wasn't until we had, so we went to our publisher in the middle of all this and we got a full like big spread printout because sometimes like having it in your hand is just different than looking at a PDF. So we got the physical printout and we we're like crazy people like trying to solve a murder mystery. We just had paper all over our boyfriend's apartment at the time. And we're just like, this doesn't belong here. It's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like a good COVID project for you guys. Yeah, it was our COVID baby. Would you do it again? What? <laughs> <laughs> would you... Uh, Any lessons learned? Yeah. Like either on the contract side or what would you restructure? I think lesson learned is like know our value. Yeah. You know, I think for us, we when we went into the project, we were like, we're not authors, you know, like we don't know how much we can actually bring by writing a book. And then seeing like the finished product, we're like, no, like we totally know and we should have understood our value. And not saying that Weldon Owen like took advantage or anything like that, but it's like, I think at least for me, I didn't have the confidence that we could like write a book like this yeah. Yeah. in the way and turn out like this. And that was, I think that's like my overall takeaway. We are, we enter things very humbly and we should give ourselves. You come out money. very confidently. We try. Do you know how many you've sold? Do they give you like any <laughs> no. sales numbers? We don't. Uh, We're waiting for a report. Yeah. Like yeah. Cause it's just in our first month or first two months of launch. Um, but I mean, hearing that they're going to translate it, things like that, it's all good signs. So yeah. Skincare decoded. I know. By Library of Congress. <laughs> vetted, vetted you can find authors. It <laughs> it's, a, it's a hardcore vetting process. The practical guide to beautiful skin. I love it. Well, thank you guys. Thank you yeah, guys Thank you so much for coming. Tell everyone where they can buy it. Just uh, last, you said Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Target. Yep, Target. Um, you can see Glory in the Pasadena store. Rearranging <laughs> books. Rearranging it's books. on top shelf in She'll Bormans be there signing copies Monday through Friday. <laughs> Her own Sharpie. Just like, yes. <laughs> Don't get me banned from Borman. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for, yeah, having, yeah. Us. Thanks for having us.